Uh, Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of the motion that speaks to guaranteeing $20 million. $20 million towards decent homes for our people in St. Lucia and especially our public officers. Mr. Speaker, sometimes I listen to my radio on television, I watch on social media, and you get the impression that the problems in St. Lucia started on the 26th of July, 2021. And there is no way that the conditions of some of the homes in the Babono constituency started on the 26th of July, 2021. Because you would look at the rotten plywoods, the rusty galvanized, and the way and the conditions in which these people live, it could not have started on the 26th of July, 2021. There are some persons who are gifted, talented, and they use their talent and their skills to manufacture lies. I'm happy, Mr. Speaker, that today we are here to manufacture and develop the truth. And it's only the truth that will set us free. We have to be on the offensive, not defensive. We are here to tell the people of St. Lucia that this government puts them first. We put them first. And when you look around, you will see why the government has to guarantee this $20 million to improve the quality of life for St. Lucians. Mr. Speaker, you look at what's happening in education, the transformation in education, and education is the future of our country. Our Prime Minister has invested heavily in education, and he continues to invest in education. Because the children of this nation, they are the future leaders. And the Minister of Education has articulated the number of areas where government is investing in education. And Mr. Speaker, I recall some time back, a few, um, about a year ago, when school reopened, and it happened this year, the Prime Minister asked all cabinet members to visit the schools before we come to cabinet the Monday morning. And the purpose of this exercise was to go and find out whether the teachers and principals had any challenges. And we had to bring these challenges to him so that he would deal with the issues immediately. And I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, that I have always done that. At the opening of school, all of us try and visit as many schools to support the Ministry of Education to identify challenges. And it is so encouraging to hear the principals and the teachers tell you, we have no issues. We have no problem. The ministry has addressed the issues during the holidays and everything is okay. And this is a sign that the government is investing in education. We look at the issue of health, Mr. Speaker, and how the government has invested in health. And there is a, a, a resident in my community who came to my home in tears she was so excited when she got support from the Ministry of Health. She could not believe that. We have in sports, Mr. Speaker, and that is where we have to invest to keep our young people occupied. And we know today we are celebrating Julian Alfred. We are celebrating our Olympics um, competitors. We are celebrating those in St. Lucia. And if we get our young people to invest their time in sports, we are going to see results. 
And Mr. Speaker, as the parliamentary rep for Babono, I've been investing in, in sports. The footballers, the cricketers, we are putting toilet facilities on the playing field. We are working on the outfield. We are taking care of the field. And now I notice the Minister of Youth and Sports is opening up in Babono with the playing fields where some people decided to come and, and take care of their goats. We'll keep it in good condition. And Babono has produced some very great sportsmen and sportswomen. Mr. Speaker, as we speak to housing, there are different levels of housing. And sometimes when the Prime Minister invests in the people of St. Lucia, the persons at the middle class level said there's nothing for them. It's only about those at the lower level. Here, we are seeing houses to the tune of $400,000 and above. Those who have invested up to 400000 will get some support. And people who are unemployed, they have no work to do. They can't build a house. We have to create employment for them so that they can build their homes. And Minister of Housing indicated the housing project in Talvan. That was a huge activity. Only to find out even the people in the area complaining they didn't get a lot. It was all sold out and taken up. The Minister of Agriculture, the government has invested heavily in agriculture. And the farmers in Babono are singing the praises of the Minister of Agriculture. The Maki farmers, that's the breadbasket for St. Lucia. Mr. Speaker, we have a very good report card to give our people. And we cannot be on the defensive. We have to be on the offensive. Let us put the truth out there. Mr. Speaker, we are talking about the roads. And we are fighting to keep and make Babono a community where you do not have holes in the road. We do not want holes in the road. And so far we are almost there at 90%, Mr. Speaker. We are using the CDP to deal with footpaths and fix up the roads to get to people into their homes. So where the Ministry of Infrastructure cannot cover, the CDP projects come in to support. These are investments that the government make in the people. And Mr. Speaker, you don't have to use any scientific formula to find out the rate of employment in St. Lucia and how unemployment has gone down, Mr. Speaker. There is a particular bus shelter. When I drive past that bus shelter, 10, 11, during the day you pass there and you see people seated at the bus shelter. That is the indicator, Mr. Speaker. You wonder why are these people sitting there? Broad day, light, what are they doing? Are they watchmen? And because they work in the night, they come and sit there during the day? And Mr. Speaker, when I passed that bus shelter and I saw one elderly man sitting there, I said, yes, there is work in the country. They have found work to do. They are not seated under the bus shelter. And I try and drive around the constituency to see what we call the blocks. And once you see the blocks are empty, they are somewhere working. And, minister, and, and Mr. Speaker, as minister with responsibility for labor, the employers in St. Lucia are crying for persons to work. They are looking for workers. Now, some of the jobs that they have, we may not have persons with the skills. And therefore, we have to train our people so that they can take on this employment. Some farm owners come to me, and they want to bring people from overseas to come and work on the farm, because they need people to do the work. Some construction workers are asking for workers. We need to engage our people so that they engage in employment. Mr. Speaker, the list goes on. And Mr. Speaker, I just want to remind you that on October 1st, the Prime Minister has announced that no St. Lucian should work for a wage less than $1,131.
or six dollars and fifty two cents an hour this is what we call our minimum wage and it is a long long time that has been in waiting and there we come and with that minimum wage the very small businesses and everybody else will be benefiting because when these people get that money they go straight to the supermarket they go to the hairdresser they go out there and buy in the market the economy begins to to spin over mr speaker guaranteeing a 20 million dollars loan for housing is in keeping with all what this government has been doing to improve the quality of life for St. Lucians. And Mr. Speaker, in trying to improve the quality of life for St. Lucians, we have started a special initiative in the Babono constituency called the Community Transformation Project. And that is a revolutionary concept. It's one where we did a survey to assess the living conditions of people in a special area in the community. And there we identified the specific needs of these people. And it started off, one, with a cleanup campaign, beautification, housing repair, electricity, water, internet, roads and creating employment and opportunities for education for every single person living in that area. And there is a bubble of excitement in these areas. And these projects would last for about six months. And at the end of the six months, we have the official opening of these projects. So when you do that, you leave one community better off. It's not just about handouts or little things here. It's a transformation. And that is doing very well, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, the more the Prime Minister can guarantee monies through institutions to improve the quality of life for St. Lucians, the better we are. And we will continue to put out the truth. We will continue to say what is good. And we want the people in St. Lucia to stay on the side of truth. And that is where we will see progress. And as was said earlier, the governor of the Central Bank is not a St. Lucian. He's not working for this government. He's working for the OECS. And in his independent assessment of economic development and growth, he is there to put out the truth. And I challenge him to go out there and put it out there. It's not coming from us. We are not the ones that cook it. We're not cooking things. We're not cooking lies. We don't know how to manufacture lies. We know how to put out the truth. And with that, Mr. Speaker, I stand in support of this guarantee so that our public officers and other St. Lucians will benefit there are many people who want to start a little home. They want to build their own home, but they do not know where to turn. And the government has provided this opportunity. The government for the people, the government by the people, and the government that will deliver and put in the people first. With this, Mr. Speaker, I give my full support to this motion on the floor.